טוב, אז שלום לכולם. מתרגשים קצת לקראת בחינה. אה, אה, סורי, פשוט סיץ' טינגליש. ‫זה רקורדת, אז הכול תצפי את זה. ‫אז אני אמרתי, ‫אנחנו כבר היו לנו את הרצפציה ‫לפני שנה, ‫רקורדת, ‫והם היו מאוד טובים קוואליטי. So I hope uh, most of you watched them. And, uh, okay. If you have uh, uh, any questions, let's start. No questions? Uh, okay, I have a question. Hi. Okay. Okay, um, so It's about uh, question 11, given a function f, uh, prove that it's Hessian, is positive definite everywhere. Um, so, uh, so you, you mean if function is convex, then it's uh, Hessian is positive definite. No, the opposite. If, uh, yes, okay, yes, yes. If it's convex, then prove that the Hessian is, uh, is positive. Okay. Uh, It seems to me the proof in the lecture, it was uh, rather, let, let, let me open the, the lecture and uh, hopefully it will help us. Yes. This might be a good lecture. The question we were given was the opposite. It, uh, it is given that the Hessian is positive definite everywhere, and we should prove that F is convex. Oh, okay. yes. Right. So, and, uh, uh, just a second. Let me share my screen. Uh, So, and what do we have in the lecture? Uh, okay, let's think together. So, uh, if uh, Hessian is convex, yes? Is, if uh, Hessian is positive, definite, yes? then uh, second derivative in any direction is uh, non-negative, non yes? Am I right? Are you with me? Yes. Okay. So, uh, and, and I hope you, you see my uh, PDF. Do you see? Yes. Okay. So, uh, Then we have one dimensional function, uh, cross section, yes? Uh, just so uh, if, if, if I have uh, such a function, uh, let, let, let's go with the, with the proof which we had uh, prob probably in uh, one direction and see whether the same kind of proof we will uh, work in opposite direction. So uh, I have a function of one variable, yes, a function of alpha, f plus alpha r. And uh, its second derivative in every point, it's uh, r transformed by equation in corresponding point by r. Do you agree with me? Yes. Okay. So if Hessian is positive definite everywhere, then there is one dimensional function has a non-negative second derivative. And uh, this I 
may leave uh, to you, or you can use it without proof. Or if you would like to take this challenge to prove that function of one variable, if its second derivative is uh, non, non negative, uh, then uh, uh, let me see. Uh, annotate, yes. So if I have, uh, so the, 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 the same picture is uh, uh, like it's shown here, yes. If its second derivative is non negative, then first derivative is uh, increasing towards right, yes. Uh, okay. I, 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 I may say it's okay for exam if you will uh, give it, uh, take it as a given. And if somebody will take challenge to, to prove that one dimensional function which has a non negative second derivative everywhere is convex, it's good, but it's not uh, required. It's challenge for you. It's enough, yes, for complete proof. Do you agree with me? Okay. So everybody is quiet. I hope that it means that you're, you're, you're So any any other question? Yes, Emil, just a quick question. And not the material related, just about the exam. Uh, other than the 33 questions that were given to us, uh, what next should we focus on? The tutorials, the lectures, which which questions? Uh, the, uh, there is a wider list. Uh, I have, you, you know probably, uh, my yellow page, my uh, basic course page on, on the web, on the Google. And uh, there is a little bit wider list of the questions, more than 33. And also some questions are in the lectures. And uh, to know uh, questions uh, solved in tutorials, this is the first cycle. And then go to the problems uh, which you will find from the previous years. Exam, despite that we don't have many of them, but those that you have, it's a good idea. So. Okay, any other question? Yes, I have a question, please. Yes, you done. And um, in the sec in the second video about the uh, conic programming, yes. uh, there is a question to find the the minimum of the maximal eigen uh, eigen values. Uh, okay, the give me please a second. I should open this part. Ah, I should stop annotation. Just a second. Stop annotation. Okay. Give me a second. Start. Okay, so uh, the, the, there is a basic, and by the way, despite that it's not in 33 questions, I strongly recommend you to know also this question to minimize maximum eigenvalue. Is it in the questions or not? Because uh, it was a maximum uh, singular, it, it was like this uh, slide, yes? Yeah, but it's based on it. Like yes, kind yes. Of. Okay, very good, very good. So you, you like to concentrate on this question. Very good. Thank you yeah. very much. I just, uh, the only question is uh, you said uh, in the video that um, the eigenvalues of uh, Ti minus A uh, is like the eigenvalues of this uh, matrix, diagonal matrix on the right side with the T minus lambda I in the, in the diagonal. Okay, yes. And you ask uh, why it is so, yes? Yes, exactly. So uh, let me try. Something in this. 
filtre. filtre. So you let, let's consider more general situation. Uh, it's almost the, the same. I have a, a matrix A plus uh, some scalar multiplied Hello. by I. Yes. Are you with me? Yes, I'm with you. Okay. And uh, uh, the claim is that eigenvalues of this matrix, if A has the eigenvalues uh, lambda i, then the uh, eigenvalues of this matrix is lambda i plus t. Uh, how can we see it? Uh, you can consider uh, any eigenvector, say uh, uh, Michael, there is a proof of that in the tutorial, but okay. can we use it as given? Uh, okay, I, I, I agree, but it's so easy. Uh, it's, it's in one line, yes. Uh, uh, oops, I, I have I, I take any eigen eigen vector of a, and I say a plus ti ti uh, multiplied by vi. Yes, it's uh, a multiplied by v, vi is lambda i vi plus uh, t multiplied by i by, by vi plus t. The I. No, it's in, in one line. Lambda plus T the I. Is it so difficult to remember? No, okay, if it's difficult for you, I know you don't remember, but if you, if you can remember, it's, it's good to, to show you. Uh, what happened uh, and with my PDF? Oh. Can, can you go to the next uh, slide uh, as well? Uh, I try to understand what happened. Uh, is my okay? Yes, and now I can uh, uh, clear. Can I clear? Okay. Yes, I, thank you. I hope it, it was clear all the jokes. Okay. So uh, you want to go and uh, next is there is the question about the matrix uh, approximation. Yes, yes, yes. I, I should stop annotation in order to get control over my PDF. Okay, okay, I'm with you. Yes, uh, here uh, I wanted to ask, um, like. You gave the final solution that this um, this uh, block uh, matrix is a PSD. This, this one, the, yes. Okay. So I wanted to ask why can I uh, give the solution like in this way? Because like we said that in uh, semi-definite programming, it should be like the calligraphy A uh, X uh, minus B. Yes. Uh, so yes, like in another way I can just uh, I can just do a diagonal matrix with the uh, t, t minus minus lambda i and uh, tell and say that uh, all of this diagonal matrix is uh, PSD it will be the same uh, just a second because the constraints are that um, for every i uh, yeah. By the way, you 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 know is that you have possibility to put marks on my screen when I'm sharing. Okay, so one second. Uh, annotate, yes. Yes. So um, I wanted to because we say that um, we all the, the constraints of the problem was that uh, for every i uh, t. Um, minus uh, lambda i will be greater or equal to zero. Yes, lambda so, i, which 
גם ב-A זה... I of the A transpose A matrix, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, I can write, rewrite these uh, constraints while putting all of them in the diagonal of the matrix. Uh, but lambda i, it's, it's eigenvalue. How I, I, I need to find x, yes? My matrix depending on x. So a, a depends on x. And how lambda i depends on x? Um, Given x, you can only do eigenvalue decomposition, probably. It's possible for any given X, you can compute I, lambda I, but uh, it's very non-convex, very difficult function of X. And uh, it's even challenging, uh, despite that it's possible to compute the derivative, for example, with respect to X. Uh, okay, so the question is, why can you write the solution of this matrix, uh, that this matrix is PSD, and because it's not in the form that uh, we learned that uh, it should be... Uh, okay, okay, let me put, let me put my, um, my annotation, annotate, and uh, you, you want to say that you, uh, so, uh, the, Let's put uh, uh, my variables are actually uh, is a long vector t and x, yes? And uh, I, I can de denote it as some x tilde, yes? So uh, my, my matrix A calligraphic multiplied by x tilde. I have, uh, and uh, Plus pro, uh, probably some b greater than or equal to zero. Th this is standard yes. form of right. uh, constraint. And uh, let's uh, have a look. Uh, and by the way, be, be, be below the particular form of uh, uh, wow, I am putting my hand in something to shift it must be there. It's okay. We will want some particular. No? Just a second. No. We want some particular form of matrix. Wow. It doesn't. Of matrix A. Why is this pen? Doesn't work. AX. Uh, it's uh, some uh, XI. AI, yes? This form we learned in the lecture. Uh, maybe it's a T. -t okay, are you with me? Yes, I'm with you. Okay, but it's, uh, it's a particular form of dependence between uh, A and X. Let, let me bring back my PDF. Th this is a particular form. Uh, it can be any other form. Uh, important that my matrix A, which is shown here, uh, uh, my matrix A, which is shown here, the Ti and A transpose of X and so on, this whole matrix is linearly depending on X. Do you agree with me? Uh, yes. So this is form to express my operator. Uh, I now can say I, I will undo, undo my, oh. what should I clear? I, 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 I will clear and I will say, I will say that this is a calligraphic x tilde. Uh, this is it. It's okay for you? Uh, all, all, all of this, I, I mean, not this particular, but everything. Oh, sorry. No, you will do what? Okay. Everything this. All this, I can call a calligraphic X tilde. 
uh, actually plus some constant because you see this a of x which is written here it also includes the a a naught yes do you see it here do you see my pointer yes i see so all this expression it's actually not uh, linear it's even plus some uh, matrix b you 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 can see you can say that this is a legal semi-definite form so all this expression is some affine uh, dependence of matrix on the vector x okay i would say this um, okay thank you i have a question about the a... question 21 no, yes, can I yes. follow up on the on the questions the multipliers when the multipliers are optimal can you wait because i have a question about this okay okay, okay. Uh, keep your question in mind and we will get there let's oh, go okay, let's do this okay. let, let's go with uh, this slide is that everything clear i just don't understand why if we take why we don't uh, um, consider the the square in the lambda max i didn't understand that uh, okay tell it again okay you, so you, you you you're talking about uh you 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 you, you mean the, this part yes i know why it's like this but i don't see us using that in the equation okay uh just a second first of all uh there was a question that we don't need this square root yes so if you want to minimize this expression lambda max uh to minimize square root or minimize without square root is the same so we we actually want to minimize lambda max of a transpose a uh, and your question is how we move to this expression? Um, do we consider in this expression the square or it doesn't even matter? The square root. Uh, let's think together. Mm -hmm. Let's think together. Uh, in this slide, it's not a hundred percent of what was in the lecture. I guess uh, we can you really remind me? We ah okay. We, we have this problem. Yes, we minimize lambda max, uh, and we know that uh, it is uh, uh, non-negative yes this matrix a transpose a is positive semi-definite always we, we have this in, in, in other questions yes. so instead of minimizing lambda max we denote t square uh, why do we why do we put t square here uh let me think a little bit yeah i think we, we, we want it automatically to be non-negative non we, we could de de denote lambda max as t square yes and we, we could have a minimized t square subject to, uh, to t square blah 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 okay but uh, minimize uh, square of something for non-negative number is uh, like minimizing t. Uh, but you should keep uh, in mind that t must be non-negative. Does it answer your your question? So again, we yes. mm -hmm. we we did not lambda max as t square. Uh, uh, t square, yes, yes, lambda max is t square. Okay. Uh, what was the remark of somebody? Somebody else tried to. Yes, yes I tried uh, to ask Michael. about uh, question 21 about the, when the multipliers are optimal. You just, just, just a second, just wait a second. With this slide, we finished. 
Okay. And uh, about multiplier is optimal. Did you watch uh, reception? Yes, I watched. I watched the lecture. Year? I watched watched it, and I was not convinced by the. Uh, but what? There, why uh, the first x we get is the optimal x? You have shown that uh, the x star that we get from the first uh, iteration is. It, it can be the optimal one, but it doesn't necessarily is by the. Okay. Then I have one more question. Did you watch reception hours hour from the last year? From yes, a year ago, reception hour towards the exam. And not in time. We re we re consider this question more accurately, and I propose you to to watch it and ask me personally if you still have question. Okay. Michael, can I ask a question about the uh, BRGS yes. algorithm? Okay, let's go. Um, we've seen in the lecture. Uh, ju uh, just when? Just a second. I, 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 want, I always prefer to move. Uh, uh, to move to the corresponding side. Stuff here. Okay. 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 Um, my question, I think it's about the previous slide. Just a second. Ah. Ah. Th th ah th this is not. <laughs> I should. This is interesting. I stopped annotation and do not remove. Yeah. Uh, well, how should I move back to annotation? Okay. Uh, annotate and clear. Clear all drawings. Okay. I'm going to stop annotation. Yes, I am with you. Yes, uh, we've seen that when f is quadratic, we get exact Hessian after n steps is equal to conjugate gradient when a b is zero with identity. Yes, yes, you, you mean this yes. expression. And I, did, I didn't prove it at, at, at all. I refer you to the, to the book of Nocidal and Wright. Uh, because they are very good experts in BHS. Okay. Um, so we need the, to know how to prove this one or no no you, you are not you, you are not required to prove things that, that I didn't ask you explicit that I didn't prove in the lecture and I didn't like ask you explicitly to do it. Okay. Um, Thanks, and that's uh, that's all I think. Thanks. Yeah. Um, do you think that if we solve the thirty-three questions, we'll be ready for the exam? It's pretty much what you expect us to know. Uh, uh, I would not say it. Uh, I would put them on highest priority. Before mm -hmm. you solve them, I would advise you don't go to other places. But uh, it's good to to solve more. I, I would put it in this way. Uh, previous exams or like um, tutorials? Because I know uh, recommended. First of all, a wider list of questions towards lectures, mm -hmm. then tutorials, and then previous exams in this order. Because you, 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 you know, it's from didactic point of view. Uh, the main goal to, of preparation to exam is to condense, to refresh and condense your knowledge of what you did during, uh, in order to have it for many years ahead, uh, somehow in your head. So it's good to go back to the stuff you already, uh, you are already paid, general mm -hmm. and then go to, to other stuff. I tell you why exactly, because I, I solved the, all the questions in the, because uh, Roy recommended 
and there are some many actually questions that use sometimes like an example and not an obvious example that contradict that they use for the the proof and if yeah, do, uh, do, do, do you mean uh, examples from the tutorials no for like like uh, you need to prove something or you need to contradict something so they give an example that does that and uh, sometimes it's not very obvious so unless we see it we cannot really think about it uh you know uh, once once again what your question is about 33 questions uh no, problems from tutorial from the tutorials or problems from previous exams problems from tutorials please please uh, insist uh, if, if you say about tutorials of ROI or NADAF, please, uh, please insist them to un answer your questions. Okay. And, and if they are able to make the answers public, it will be very good. Okay. Please. Um, I have a small, I think, general question. Um, yes. Let's say when we drive the, the Newton direction or we do the ADMM, we assume that our, our uh, Hessian uh, or in the ADMM, the matrix is uh, invertible. How, how can we, when can we, I mean, in the question, we, we, it doesn't say that the matrix is uh, uh, semi-definite or anything. So how do I know that I can uh, invert it? the hashing uh, in newton let's say in newton uh, direction question so uh, your question is more about newton method yes it's about how, how do i know that i can je, je, the, je, the just matrix i i want to go to newton method is it right thing to, to do now i call the, the yeah okay yes then let's go let's go uh, modified new Newton method. This was our topic. Yes. So the, the basic Newton method really requires inversion of Hessian as, as written here. But modified new Newton does interesting thing. Uh, where do we have it? The, the, this way. Right, you, I know. You, so you should the, go again through, through this lecture, maybe. Or let's discuss it now. Yes, okay. So uh, a, a, for example, is your Hessian. I assume it's not positive Hessian. It may have some zero eigenvalues or negative eigenvalues. You, you apply, modify it one of the way, because the, the, there is another method which I referred even uh, also in uh, my Zoom tutorials, also in reception uh, uh, hours, that there is a uh, trust region Newton, but, but we don't learn it in our course, despite, despite that it is important, but it's a little bit more technical, so we don't have time. To. So we, we, we learn more, more modified Chilist uh, factorization. So if you take Matrix A and apply it uh, to it modified Chilesky factorization, the expression L, D, L transpose, you get those two matrices, D and L, is positive de definite. And you can go with it uh, instead of uh, actual Newton direction, and uh, algorithm should uh, converge in, in general. So but, uh, uh, now, convergence... is, yes. Convergence is not guaranteed, right? So uh, it it is. Uh, you 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 have you have not explicit guarantees of past convergence. You you have two uh, two parts in your trajectory. First part, for example, if you are far from solution, and uh, your quadratic model is very non-convex. The only thing you are guaranteed that your direction, uh, that your direction will be direction of descent. Uh, we did show it in the lecture. Uh, this is only if uh, if your function is convex, right? No, no, no. Be, 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 because 
because you you solve you 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 go with this kind of direction yes you you say your direction decay yes do you see my point uh, yes it's inverse yes. of this matrix l d l transpose this matrix is positive definite multiplied by g and because the, this matrix is positive definite it's inverse also it's positive definite the product with g it uh, makes cute angle with uh, direction of G. It means that uh, this is decay, it's always direction of descent. Even if it descends purely, it still descends. It, it's relatively yes. good direction. And in, in practice, in practice, I should say that it's very good method for non-convex function. And is, is, as, as you saw, as example for Rosenberg function, Want, yes, but, uh, but uh, yes, yes. the fact that the direction is the direction of descent does not guarantee convergence. Uh, it is. It, it is because if your direction, you, you, we didn't concentrate on proofs in our course because we wanted to cover general principles. There are other optimization courses which are much more rigorous but they don't cover so much intuition as you try to do. I, I so said if, if you, just... you uh, let me say one more. Okay, okay. If you go in direction, which is direction of descent, of significant descent, it's cute angle with uh, gradient, and you do line search in this direction, unless you are in the minimum, you are guaranteed to, to perform significant decrease of your objective function. And this is basic part of the proof of convergence. You, okay. you, you cannot get stuck where uh, think if you are if you are at the point where gradient is far from zero, uh, then your method will decrease your function significantly. You will not get stuck there. So it will converge to the area when gradient become more and more close to zero. It may be not minimum for non-convex function, but maybe flat area, yes, which is not minimum, then will be the same. You, you, you may have uh, such a situation in a group. Wow. Yes, takes time. You, you, you may have, uh, I draw one di 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 dimensional feature. Such a function, yes. When here it is completely flat, you may get stuck in this medium. So you, you get to critical. Such uh, algorithms are guaranteed to converge to critical points. Th this is uh, really the fact. For non-convex function, it's uh, impossible to guarantee something better. But uh, in practice, it's not a good. So we can always assume that the, the Hessian is invertible or only in the Newton case when uh, we can use a Schkowski factorization. Because let's say- you, the... you, you should not assume that Hessian is invertible. Modified Cholesky provides you with a, with a modified Hessian automatically, which is invertible. Even so in your actual function, the Hessian, the Hessian was not invertible. Is there other uses for the modified Chodsky for the factorization or only in Newton? I mean, can you take any, in any question that's not related to the Newton uh, method and say, okay, if we take this uh, matrix and, and do a modify, we can uh, invert it or it's not a... Uh, it depends on context. It's a, I'm afraid to say such general statement. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, in, in the ADMM question, uh, for example. Okay, let's move to ADMM. And I hope that you did watch uh, the yes, reception hour a uh, year ago. Okay. Yes, I watched it. It's a small uh, question. It's again about let, the. Let's go. Let's go. It's, it's good. It's, it's, good. it's again, good. It's, it's just about why why can we. Uh, just a second. About, uh, the, in, in any case, when we are talking about something, it's good uh, to have it uh, in front of our eyes. 
Yes, what is your question? You have, you have a slide that uh, uh, it's uh, written the, the DX and the, all the derivatives. Just in red, in the, uh, the... you, you mean lasso or? Yes, yes, about the, the lasso. Okay. Here, okay. In the X, why can we invert the uh, A transpose A minus rho? Because it, it, it said that A is semi-definite or something. I, I maybe missed it. I, I, I mean. I think it should be plus row here, not minus. Maybe plus, yes. Just a second. Um, uh, where do, uh, let, let, let's think together. Yes, it, it, it should be plus. Thank you very much. Because we, we have this uh, yes, function. Okay. Yes, we want to minimize it in X. So okay. this contributes A transpose A to the equation, yes? Mm -hmm. And this, of course, contributes for, thank you very much. You, I should yes, correct. Should and this also case. on the other side, also plus uh, rho Z. Actually, I know that that's- Yes, also in this should be plus. Uh, you mean uh, which line? And also, ah, yeah. uh, all, all these should be plus, right? Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay, good. I think, I mean. Yes, so, uh, so it's, it's, it's good for students okay. to look for. Uh, do, do you hear me? Hello? Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Any other question? I would like to ask a question about this uh, slide. Uh, is the, do we need to know how to derive the uh, z, uh, the optimal z in this situation? Like how do we get to the uh, optimal z function? Optimal z, z it's a little bit challenging, but this is what exactly was considered in detail in last year uh, reception hour. Please go. Yes, that's fine. Please go, go there. And try as as much as you as you can to reproduce. I know it's, it's, it's a little you bit. You expect that you expect that we know how to derive it. Uh, I, I I encourage you to go. Yes. Can you repeat that? I encourage you to know uh, how it is derived. Yes. To understand okay. the theory explanation which was go which was given in the reception office. Okay, any other question? Um, yes, I have a question about the uh, Armijo rule with uh, yes. uh, the Wolf uh, condition. Armijo. Armijo rule, yeah. Are you, are you, do you have Spain connections? Um, I didn't you're, hear you. Can you're, you you're, do you have Spain uh, connection? You you pronounce it in the right way. Ah, uh, no. Uh, just a second. Uh, oh. Okay. Yes, I am with you. Um, when we just have the regular condition, we uh, decrease alpha by two in each iteration, right? Divide it, uh, alpha by two. Yeah, we, we multiply it by beta oh, smaller by beta. than one, yes. Yes, but when we have the also the Wolf condition, the strong Wolf condition, ah, how yeah. should we, how should we uh, update alpha? Yes, uh, yes, yes. Thank you for this question. Uh, with backtracking line search, which is uh, okay for gradient descent or for even for Newton methods, you you can go with uh, backtracking line search and to check to check other other rules. Uh, to get strong wolf condition, you need more advanced line search. 
you need uh, you need uh, polynomial uh, with safeguards, quadratical cubic with safeguard. I didn't load you with this uh, requ uh, requirement. Uh, just a second. Uh, just a second. Wait a second. One to be just watching. Ken, uh, I I I'm so uh, you you need to, to use uh, say quadratic or cubic interpolation line search, which is uh, more sophisticated with safeguards to get to the okay. And it's good that we went here because Wolf condition it's uh, uh, it's here, yes. Mm -hmm. So to get to the to the point where gradient is okay. Any other question? <coughs> How many people stay here? Well, no, no. So everybody is satisfied. Okay. Well, Maybe question. just. Just a small question about uh, the positive Hessian uh, question, which was the first question uh, this hour. Um, do we know that if uh, a function is convex along any line? Yes. Uh, it's if and only if it's convex? Yeah, yes, you, you, you can uh, take it as a, as a given. I didn't require you to prove it, but but it's a very easy proof. It's very easy proof because along each line. Uh, Can you show it again? Uh, Give me one second. Technical problems. I want to to find some uh, empty space. Doesn't matter. Say here, give me one second. Uh, annotate. So, if I have a function of many variables, yes, say of two variables, and I have two points x and y, and uh, connect them with straight line, yes? Yes. I know by definition of convexity, uh, if, if I take, uh, for, 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 for example, I, 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 I go, for, for, for example, x plus, uh, Alpha y minus x. So when alpha is zero, I am in the x. When alpha is one, I am in the, in the, in the y. So, and by definition of con convexity, I put here alpha, uh, f, f of x, and here when alpha is one, it will be f of y, and I can draw a linear function. And convex function should be below, yes? This is definition of uh, convexity, yes? F, uh, F of uh, this uh, uh, less, uh, uh, less or equal, F of X uh, plus, what is the uh, alpha F of X? Just just see. second uh, f uh, f of x plus alpha uh, uh, y minus f of x. I am uh, rewriting standard uh, requirement of convexity in a bit of uh, an, an unusual way, but it's uh, 
almost the, the, the same. We, we know that objective function on this uh, line should be lower, lower than linear function, yes? And then if you draw this one dimensional picture, which I tried by hand waving to show you, you, you understand that as function of alpha, it should be also convex. So th this is, and, and the, the, this you can find in any handbook, but I don't require you formally to know this proof because I didn't give it to you. You, you, you can just use this, this fact, yes. The convex function should be convex. Okay, it's convex if and only if it's convex uh, along any, any line. It's very easy. And along any line which, uh, which x belongs to, it's also? In, in, in the, the, in the domain, in, in the domain of the function, yes. Because in our proofs we didn't uh, we didn't talk about any line. We talked only about lines which x belongs to. Uh, we talked about lines of the form x plus alpha uh, multiplied by the any direction. Or yes, R. but uh, is, it, is, is, it, is it is it not the, the same as the say? So, for example, here is domain of my function, yes? And I can place x uh, to any point, yes? And put line in any direction. Is, is it uh, correct that like, I put any line, any feasible line? Of course, all these directions should be feasible. If I am on boundary of, of the, the domain, it's a little bit more sophisticated. And I, I, did, I don't require you to get to the mathematics when you are on the boundary. It's really challenging. Le, le, uh, suppose, as, assume that our domain is unbounded. It will be more simple. Then it's really any line, yes? Yes, yes, of course. Okay, le, let's so in this, let's in this question uh, assume domain unbounded, you are right. Because you, if if you start thinking about boundary, you you need to have more involved in mathematics. We can, uh, Michael. We can just think uh, about open set, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Not, uh, uh, think about unbound. Unbound. Yeah. Unbound yeah. is the, the easiest one. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Uh, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, about about the lemma of sure uh, complement twenty nine. Yes. Yes, uh, yes. So you lay out the outline for the proof. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I from what I understand, you you lay out the uh, proof for uh, only the first direction, like saying uh, that we know that uh, the matrix uh, A is. Uh, positive uh, semi-definite and then uh, we from that we we know that uh, the p minus q transpose r minus one q is also positive definite uh, so just, that's like one direction but let's think together if we're wrong it's it uh, let's think together i like uh, draw it arrows in, in the both directions yes yes yeah, so like it's an if if and only if statement right yes let's think and together about this yes so and the, uh, which direction is more difficult do you think well i know one direction i'm just not sure if the proof is a uh, it goes both ways for every transition uh, try to verify it. If I... Yes. So, so uh, we say that the uh, matrix is positive definite. Uh, so this uh, expression should be positive, then infinitum of this expression should be positive. So the what was in the in the lecture? Given the matrix is positive definite, yes. 
the infinum uh, in uh, V should be also positive. Yes. So then this matrix should be uh, positive different because it should be positive for any U. And yeah, this is like straightforward because the, yes, once you uh, develop the the uh, once you develop it, you get that uh, like V is a minus R minus one Q U, and then you can substitute it in, and then you get the statement. And now we, 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 we are trying to think together in opposite direction, yes? yes. For example, this is correct for any U. We are given that this matrix is positive definite. Yes. Uh, does it mean that uh, in film in, in V, so, uh, so, uh, and, and, the, and this is infinum in V. Infinum, uh, so we, we got that infinum in V of this expression is positive, yes? Yes. No, it's okay. If infinum oh, so in you, V so is So you positive. say like any. Okay. Yes, yes. Is so it you okay? gather that if, if infinum in V is positive, then you can say that any other. The, any then other this, v. yes. If, uh, just a second. If infinum in V is positive for, for any U, yes? Okay. Then uh, it's positive for any U and V? Is it, I, I, I just uh, yeah, think I guess, to, I guess together that's... with you. I want you to check <laughs> me. <laughs> sure, no, I, I think actually that's a, uh, I, I think you can see that. Like if for, you, if you substitute for any V, you substitute for any V, then you uh, it's for sure greater than the infinitum in this case. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I Thank agree you very much. much. Uh, who, 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 who was it? Uh, Ofri? Yes. Okay. Ofri, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. I, so, so, yes. This is what uh, I am to enjoy the, the most collective thinking is stupid. Okay, so any, any other questions? It seems that due to very long reception hours last mm -hmm. year. Yeah, yes, yes. I'm... Oh. Yes, I have one question. Um, it's about question 17, which is uh, derive the rank, uh, the rank one quasi Newton update. So first okay. of all, do we talk about the S, uh, SR1 method? Yeah, yes, we, we talk exactly what was developed in the lecture. Um, but the develop. Okay, the develop uh, okay let, let, let's go. Let, let's go. Let's yeah. go. To, to, to this place. It's is this a rank one update? Uh, it's uh, it for, for Hessian and there was the, the same for inverse Hessian, yes? Uh, so just uh, to be on the same page uh, with the uh, signs, BK is the inverse Hessian and HK is the Hessian. Yes, yes. The, the Hessian model, yes? The HK model. is the Hessian model and uh, BK is model of investigation or investigation. So I only invite, invite you to know what you have in the lecture. You, do, you should not go to any other place. Uh, but like in the question itself, there is already everything. So I don't understand what we need to do. Just a second. Uh, repeat your, your question. Try to understand. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, in the question itself, in question 17, it looks like we already have everything. So I don't understand what we need to do. They say you the need uh, mm -hmm. you need to to know to the, the develop this yourself without already, formula sheet. No, but they already give us everything. So I, I thought maybe it's something else because no, 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 no. You know to develop this question. It's like you know. 
Uh, like you already understood, my, my course is a little bit uh, unusual. It's uh, more in spirit the courses you got in the first two years of your studies. Uh, they have theoretical questions, theory, mm -hmm. theory questions. If you, if you know how to develop such not very difficult things, it's, it's very difficult. Okay. 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 I, I have a small question about the Zach and Wendy playing with the Minmax. And yes. Uh, wow. It's not, it's not like in the lecture, it's more advanced. It's a, a stu student, uh, what's his name? Uh, Cohen? Uh, no? he, he, he made this interpretation. So we, we, we need to, I, I don't have it in front of, would you like to put it uh, to make screen share? Oh, I have it uh, on paper, but it just say uh, that uh, oh. they're playing and and uh, you have the function f, uh, z, and w, right? And yeah. z want to minimize, and w wants to maximize. Uh, let, 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 let me go to my slide, to the slide of my new lecture, maybe. Yeah, okay. Oops, uh, where it was? It was before or after again? Yeah. And the min max system. Yes. Here, for, for example, here is the, the same in other words, yes. Yes. So what I, I am not sure that I understand, I mean, I, I understand the rules and everything, but I don't understand why the player who plays first, uh, not just uh, choose the what's good for him. I mean, if, if Z would just choose a uh, mean Z, then next turn, W will choose max max W and it will be max min. It will be much better. Why why would it choose min max? Just a second, just a second. The W player wants to maximize, yes? Right, yes. Okay. So, and you say, assume the W plays first, yes? And I know, I said uh, assume Z plays first, but okay. It, no. I don't think it's... Uh, it's just a second. Think about your question because it's a uh, challenge. You, you, you have to pass through it several times even to formulate the question right. Oh, okay. Time, I, uh, okay. Let's so, say Z play first. Okay, then we in this situation. I hope right. you see my point. So yes, W plays second, yes? Right. So he already knows what Z did. He just does the simple thing, maximizing W. So, what is your question about Z? I, player? The question is what is not uh, the opposite? Because in the last, uh, I'm not sure if it was the reception hour of last year or, or uh, it was in the lecture, that you show an example that if you uh, um, first choose Z and then choose W, then Z will be inside and W will be outside. I mean, it would yeah, be- Yes, if you first choose Z, this formula is right. Right. So why why when Z chooses first, it's not the second formula? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. You see, even I do mistakes. Because <laughs> it's confusing. Because, who choose first is outside. It's first in this uh, record. Okay. No, I understand it's happened, but I don't understand why. Okay. If it has, it, if it chooses first, yes? Yes. He doesn't know yet what W player will do. He may only anticipate the W is clever and for given choice of Z, you will uh, maximize in W this expression. Okay, but if we choose Z first and we minimize FZW with the minimum Z, which means we take the minimum function that we for, get. For, uh, for, for which W do you want to do it? 
What's why do I take in, in a, why do I even think about the W? Because if I just take the minimum Z, then because, uh, uh, later. This is function of two variables. And mi minimum minimizer in Z depends on particular value of W. Even, uh, even in very simple examples when uh, you have uh, Z squared plus W squared. You, you, I hope you understand the minimum in, in Z for, for different Ws will be different. Yes. That's yeah. why this is a little bit sophisticated. Okay. And it's good to, to watch lecture to uh, really to get it in, into your head. The best thing is to watch Zoom lecture. It's my Zoom lecture, it's like tutorial during semester. I yeah. hope that you had opportunity to watch it. The, this is the, the only thing to get it in, into your brain. And I, I really recommend to everybody to watch uh, this, at least this Zoom, Zoom lecture. I, uh, of course, I would strongly recommend to uh, watch every Zoom lecture. It's actually a wrong name. It's Zoom lecture slash tutorial, yes? yes. And, and, and we discuss it in very, very deep, Deep detail. Yes, yes, I'm with you. Okay, thank you. You, you I, I really advise to you and to everybody go to at least to this Zoom, Zoom lecture, but uh, to be to, to feel like good uh, towards exam uh, to pass as, as many as, as you can. Okay. Be, because we, we, we have particular exam, many particular examples with matrices with discrete version of this problem, and students really get used to this. Without that, it's very difficult. I hope you still have time to, to go through. Okay, oh. thank you. Okay, please. Uh, any, any other question? Okay, okay. So we had the relatively short exception hour. And uh, thank you very much for participation. I still give you half a minute to think. Maybe. Last second question. I got what? one more question. Uh, okay. Uh, so about the self-duality of the semi-definite cone. Ah, about self-dual cones. Yes, yes. Let, let, just a second. Let, let me move there. Okay. self door yes, yes, okay. Okay, so, so basically, um, from what I saw in the lectures, the, the proof was I take two, um, a, let's say, matrices from the cone, and I prove that uh, they're, uh, uh, multiplication is, is uh, positive, right? Just a second. Let, let, let's go to basic stuff without matrices. Uh, I should also put drawing too. Somehow. Their inner product, basically. So if, if, if I have a cone, yes? This cone is not self dual, yes? Despite that, if I took two vectors, x and y, if I have two vectors, x and y, inside of cone, the inner product will be positive, it's, it's okay. But why I know that this cone is not self-dual? Because uh, it should uh, coincide with, with dual cone, and dual cone will, will be wider. Yes, I should take straight angle like I did in the, in the lecture, like I did already. So, and straight angle here. Oops, sorry. Should undo. Okay. And, uh, 
the straight angle here, for example. And this wider cone with will be tall, it doesn't correspond to coincide with primal. primal. What does it mean? Uh, I, I can take any vector, uh, I can take a, a vector from dual common, and still it will have a positive inner product with uh, every vector of primal. So in this way, in this way, this cone is not self-dual. So if I have a situation like here in the next if you have a vector that's outside of the primal if I have self-dual cone. Yes. So yeah. what property does it have? The two vectors from inside have a positive inner product, but any vector outside, I can find a vector inside which will have negative inner product. Uh, we discussed it in detail in the re re reception hour last yes, year. Yes, I, I saw the reception hour. So, so you, yes. so you, you, you say basically that you have two conditions to prove uh, to show self duality. First, that if you take two uh, vectors from inside the cone, their inner uh, uh, product is uh, positive, or it's inside the cone. No, no negative. Then, yes. Uh, yes. And non-negative, and also if you take a vector from, does it have to be the dual cone, or it can be any any vector outside? Outside the cone. Uh, any so it vector doesn't belong. outside the. Yes. Continue. Yes. Yeah, so if any take one vector from outside the cone, and then if uh, it does not have any. Um, a vector inside the cone such that their uh, inner product is uh, is uh, negative yes. or not yes. yeah it's negative then i it, it is not a self uh, dual cone so yes. basically for the for the semi definite matrices that we semi definite matrices cone how do i show the second the second uh, yeah. And uh, we had this uh, in Zoom tutorial. So you you have a uh, you have a, oops two matrices A B, and you say assume that B is not positive, B not P is D, not positive semi definite yes okay then exist positive semi-definite a so, uh, and uh, then exist a positive semi-definite in the way that this inner product uh, less than zero and and we had this in zoom tutorial in zoom tutorial uh, in zoom lecture okay. Zoom lectures, it's called Zoom lectures, yes? Which corresponds look to, at, to this at. topic. We just solved this problem. And then I invite you to what you say. Okay, I will say. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So, any other question? Okay. Again, I, I give you a few seconds because uh, sometimes question comes. If you if you are still staying, ah, okay, then you hope that somebody will, will ask more questions. I understand. Um, I do have a question, but uh, you already discussed it yes. uh, on the um, the reception hours uh, from last year. Yes. Uh, but I still didn't really understand. It's a, a, for us, it's question 24, which means that uh, um, given a computational graph of function f, explain how to build the Jacobian product graph. Yes, so, yes. Uh, just a second. Let me, first of all, let's be, be there on my slides. Uh, 
and then we will discuss Uh, maybe here, yes, maybe here. Okay, uh, here and the, this slide and the next one, maybe. Mainly this one. Okay, so try to ask what you a question. I, I said. Okay, so I I do remember when we talk about the adjoint, there's like a joint is on the on the next slide. A joint okay, so, is on the next slide. You want me so to move? So like a, no no. The you, next, don't oh. re, you don't need, really need to because I, I do remember there's like this certain rule that you just flip it and, and all the plus. No no no. I want to, to give a slide. When you ask okay, about okay. something, I want to have a slide <laughs> in, in front of my eyes. So I do okay. remember like when there is a. a, a Split, so it turns into a plus, and when there is a plus, it turns into like a split in the joint, and yeah, everything yeah. is backward. But when we talk about the Jacobian, I really feel like it's it's per graph. Like, is there this rule, like like in the joint case? Just or... second. Mm -hmm. uh, let go step step by step. So if if I have a linear graph, yes. If two branches come together in forward pass, what can be here? Here can be only plus, yes? Yes. And uh, sometimes uh, it's not very general. I Unfortunately, I have pluses in one direction and uh, nodes, uh, splitting nodes in other, but actually it may be both uh, in, in, in any direction. But if I have a uh, graph if i have a linear graph and uh, it has some corresponding main metrics if i propagate through this graph in ah no actually i have splitting node here in forward pass yes yes and it becomes plus in, in backwards pass yes if i propagate y in uh, opposite direction it's the same as I multiply y by transpose matrix. So, what is your question? Try to. I question, my question is um, for it's the for Jacobian. any linear for any linear graph, and multiplication by Jacobian is a linear graph. And okay, but what we are given in this question is the the graph. Uh, like the the up the upper graph here we are not given and we need to derive from it the graph down below but yes and and, and this will actually, give you multiplication by jacobian but the same graph will allow you to multiply also by a joint jacobian you just propagate in opposite direction yes yes that was you and uh, but still what i'm saying what my question is that if you give me a graph i can build the uh, the the dx the dy graph but if a, a graph isn't given to me and it's like we have a graph how to compute the the dx the dy graph okay um, so first of all somebody should give you the first graph yes Yes, but in this question, you just you have a computational graph. Explain how to build the Jacobian problem. Okay, so you assume that this graph is given to you, or otherwise, you maybe you you are you are free to draw yourself some very simple graph, very simple computational graph. This is okay. your starting point. Okay. So okay. okay. Thank you. You see, we are waiting, waiting, and then other questions come to to the to heads of other students. Give them opportunity to think about more questions. Okay. So half a minute more. I mean, I do have more questions, but I don't okay, know. Okay, very good. <laughs> 
the neue ah, you, you, you are the most active it's uh, on the uh, good do you want to know my id so you can i'm kidding <laughs> uh, <laughs> um uh, so uh, it's about conjugate directions okay and the uh, gradient let me, let me move there Yes, I'm with you. Yeah, I, I don't really know how to. Okay, so let's see which slide is uh, most appropriate and it may help us formulate the, the question. It's a, a, a general question. If we have a DI uh, direction that are a Q conjugate. Yes. And we start doing the, the algorithm according to each one of them. Yes. Uh, so I do know that, like in the k step, uh, the dk would be k conjugate, uh, q conjugate to all the steps before it, like for the span of it. Mm -hmm. But is it true to all, also say it about the um, the gradient? Because I don't understand the connection between the if we take some general d n. Uh, Q conjugate direction, what is the connection to the gradient? I just saw something. Okay, the, the, okay, I try to answer. Okay. There are two levels of answer uh, because the method is rather advanced. First of all, we think, what if we are just given conjugate directions and don't ask about gradients? And, but we have algorithms. In every in first step, we minimize in the first direction. Yes. Yes. And what do we do in the second step? We minimize in the second conjugate direction, but yes. automatically we get minimum in subspace of two of them. Yes. Expanding yes. my my. This happens automatically. So, first of all, we think that set uh, in simple method, set of conjugate directions is given to us, and we do very simple thing. We in, in every step we take one more direction, and from the point where we are, we minimize our objective function in this direction, and that's all. All the methods. We do n one dimensional minimizations, like it is written here. You, you see, you minimize in alpha i. You don't, uh, actually, you don't care, you even about seconds. But, but we, we say, let, let's do it. We minimize in first and then in second and so on. Uh, the, this is all the method, and the, the question related to the exam is to show that after first minimization, we are in minimum in first direction, and after second, we are in minimum in subspace of first to conjugate direction, after the third step, the three, and so on, until we reach all of them, and in end steps, we solve our problems. Does it have something to do with the gradient direction? Because I didn't see. Uh, here, no, no. Uh, uh, thank you very much. You have good questions. <laughs> uh, it doesn't have no thing to do with gradient directions in this formulation. You just do one dimensional minimizations, and that's all. Um, you even so don't calculate gradient. When we do a uh, gradient conjugate gradient, uh, so it's yeah. just a special uh, uh, occasion of a conjugate direction. Yes, in conjugate gradient, but more advanced. In conjugate gradient, you 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 do use gradients. You use uh, 
first gradient in the starting point as the first conjugate direction. <coughs> and then having when you have when you have a next gradient you with Gram Schmidt procedure, which is long formula here, but it becomes really simple in the end. You build the second conjugate the direction and minimize. Here, gradients and directions are inter interplaying in more in more sophisticated way. In conjugate gradient, method. yes. What I understand from you that even if we do a, a normal conjugate direction, we will meet Canes. <laughs> yeah, co co convergence. Convergence in the same rate as we do conjugate gradient with. It literally doesn't really matter what direction we take as the conjugate. The only thing that the method of conjugate direction in its original idealistic form, it's not uh, realistic because where do you take this and vectors in easy way? And conjugate gradient gives you a simple procedure to get them automatically. With a very simple procedure, yes. You, you a new con conjugate the direction, just linear combination of current gradient and uh, previous step, yes. <coughs> so th that's why conjugate gradient is practical method. Conjugate the direction is like. Idealistic explanation why it's good to go in this, in this direction. Okay, thank you. Oh, please. Michael, do we need to know how to uh, derive all these uh, equations, the conjugate gradient, the, 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 the test? Uh, it's a little bit challenging for you. That's why I only asked you to develop this pro expanding manifold problem. Only this, only this. But I require for you more simple to understand well this uh, basic method of conjugate directions. Okay, so in uh, so in conjugate gradients, we won't need uh, to derive any anything. Uh, uh, I, I I would say in conjugate gradient, if there will be a question. You will be given this formula, and you will be asked. You, you, uh, I, I would say, you should understand what is going on in this slide, the method itself, what it is doing. The, this is good to understand. But even those formula, Wallach-Rivier and Fletcher-Reeves, you don't have to mem memorize them. You should know that they are, they are some, despite that they are relatively simple. But I don't require just to remember this problem. But to understand what is going here, that you will take first the direction as gradient at starting point, and then, then do a exact line search, and then compute new direction as linear combination, yes, of new gradient and previous direction that you moved. <coughs> this basic stuff you should understand. And, and also what is on, on, the, on the right here to, to understand the, if I will give you this to be able and, and say, assume that my function has this form to be able to write this part. But it's not so difficult, but it's, it's good to, to, to understand how, how do you compute. So, so here are two, two questions. How to compute gradient of quadratic functions? This should be rather simple for you after all our course. And one more thing: how to do one-dimensional optimization of quadratic function. It's like, like I told in the lecture, it's one-dimensional Newton. You need to know to calculate first and second derivative in this direction, and that's all. Not much. Okay, uh, one more question about this. Uh, 
do do we have to do exact line search I mean, if we want to have this uh, in uh, in conjugate gradient yes you uh, uh, you 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 never can do absolutely exact line search but the uh, requirement to accuracy of line search in conjugate gradient more serious than for example in quasi newton methods this is one of the reasons why people use quasi newton for non-quadratic functions. But for quadratic functions, uh, exact line search is analytical. So people do use uh, conjugate gradients for quadratic functions. And the uh, conjugate uh, directions, we also need the exact line search? Uh, conjugate direction is the general scheme. Actually, in order in order to have this expanding manifold property, you do have, just a second. You, uh, you assume that you do exact, you achieve exact minimum, yes? In the span of your previous directions, then your new gradient will be orthogonal and so on. So you do need the exact line search. But uh, again, conjugate uh, direction method, it's really explicitly we develop it for quadratic functions. And of course, uh, exact line search is just analytical. Okay, okay, thanks. Okay. Few more seconds. Ten more seconds to think about other questions. Linoy, do you have more questions? Uh, not really, not at the moment. Okay, good. good, good. Uh, so then, uh, watch tutorials and uh, ask questions in the in the group. I see that WhatsApp group is rather good. There are a few strong students, and sometimes. Uh, I or other assistants uh, or teaching assistants are also, but uh, many times good students answer. So ask more questions in the group. It's good. Uh, uh, Michael, uh, I'm sorry, can I have one more question, please? Yes, yes. yes. Um, it's about the uh, Lagrangian and augmented Lagrangian function. Yes. So yes. when I have the, the augmented Lagrangian, the, the function, mm -hmm. does, uh, does it, do I know that, that, that it, uh, uh, that it, uh, just a mechanic at NACA KT? Just a second. Uh, just a second. Try to remember. Uh, maybe it was a little bit late, late after I DNA. You might put in the ground. Yeah. So it was a kind of explanation. It, it was more accurate in the reception hour. But the general idea. If you if you are in the optimal point, yes. If you yeah. achieved uh, x star, and uh, also and also and consider what is uh, gradient of augmented Lagrangian, you can show that. Uh, that augmented Lagrangian gradient is zero and it's equivalent to the KKT condition. Uh, it means that slopes of this penalty multiplier function are the same as the optimal Lagrange multipliers, yes? Yes, that, that one I understood, but it doesn't mean that uh, the optimal solution for F x is 
is, a, is the same as the optimal solution for the regular Lagrangian, because maybe F can bring a, a better, a, a, a lower solution. It, just, I mean, it's one way. Uh, we assume, so th this was discussed, I think, in details. We, 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 we assume that we are in the minimum, maybe I should, um, it's writing food. Okay. okay. Get to it. Uh, let's see whether I will be able to write. So, assume that we have minimum, uh, the, the problem, minimum f of x subject to what, what we have g. G I X uh, less equal zero. And assume that X star is solution. Uh, what is your question? What does it mean solution? No, that, that what I understood, but the, the, this is the, the best point, yes? The best point that it has minimal value of objective function and still sell. Satisfy constraint. The, the, there is no better point. There is, there is no uh, x which has smaller objective function and still satisfies constraints. Yes? Yes. So th this is our starting point. Assume that we have such an x and uh, assume that this is a good problem that KKT condition is satisfied in this x. Then we are asked to show that this is also a minimizer minim of augmented Lagrange. It means that the uh, optimality condition with this uh, key prime is satisfied. Yeah? And we, we, we know that key prime at the origin is the, the same as its argument, as, as lambda, which is same here. Yes. Try to get back to your question. Um, it, it just seemed to me that, that, that this proof is only one way. So uh, you okay. say the minimum of F is the minimum of, of Lagrangian if it exists. Uh, uh, okay, no. I, I, we, we, uh, let, let, let's say in the beginning, we assume that. We have a problem with uh, KKT conditions satisfied. Yes, we yes. have good optimization problem, and we are given this uh, optimal uh, optimal x. Uh, I I know that in previous version it was not formulated even in the late in the lecture it was not formulated in best way. In the question it is formulated more rigorously. And be in our reception hours last year. Um, okay. Let's think together. Yes. Can anybody help us? Seems that everything is okay. So we 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 are given this uh, optimal solution, and we want to show that. It corresponds to the minimum of augmented Lagrangian. Yes? Then, uh, to show that gradient of augmented Lagrangian is zero at this point. Yes, that, that's what I, I know that uh, I understood that, but I mean, it doesn't mean that uh, the augmented uh, Lagrangian doesn't have another minimum function that is lower than this x prime. Uh, first of all, it, it may have, just a second, it, it may have, no, uh, let me think how to answer. Uh, augmented Lagrangian, we have, uh, first of all, we have convex prob problem, yes? So if uh, some point is a, minim a minimizer, then the, in best case, there may be, other points with the same value of objective function. 
But if this minimizer, it, it also uh, satisfies constraints. Uh, other minimizer may be also, but we need to think about more delicate proofs. But they definitely don't have better value. And definitely there is no, no better value, uh, no better feasible value by definition of this stuff. I, 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 I let you think uh, alone about this and uh, write me or write in the group. Because all, all G of the constraints are also convex? Yes, yes. The convex optimization problem is that objective function and constraints are convex. Okay. Uh, so another thing, why do if we if if you prove that uh, we we don't need p uh, to be an uh, infinity to find this minimum, so uh, why do we need uh, to increase p every time if we are if we will uh, find? I understand your 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 question, and the short answer is that with every uh, unconstrained minimization. After you update multiplets, you become more and more close to optimal multiplets. You don't know them in advance. And uh, the theory says that if you have larger P, your convergence to optimal multiplets is faster. This is short answer. So basically, it's, it, we, will con uh, we will converge even if we want to uh, increase P, we will just increase, uh, converge uh, slower. Yes, yes. Exactly. Okay. Okay, I, th I, th I think it's enough for today. And try to ask questions in the group. Continue. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Have uh, good luck in our exam and in your all others. Other results. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.